asking on behalf of a brother yeah. who did not know what time Asa really kicked in. He prayed it a bit earlier. So he's, saying, he's asking, is his prayer still valid? Or does he need to sit at the proper time? Uh, firstly, I would, I would like to remind you about uh, following up those who are credited in defining the exact accurate dating record. So nobody, no one will be disagreeing. We leave these, the, the answer about these uh, things to those who are experts, expert Muslims who have studied, followed up these cases. But if you're talking about Salatul Asr, can we delay it or we advance it? Is that what you're saying? Someone prayed it before the time came in, so because they didn't know. If he does, if he doesn't know, it depends. Did he try to know? Did he exert an effort for that? Okay, so Allah knows best what kind of mistake was that. Did it, is it mingled with some leniency, neg negligence, or not? But in general we say, in general we say, if a person made it by mistake, then hope inshallah to be forgiven. But if he, if he is mufarrit, and he is, uh, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't deal with the matter seriously, then this is a sin. Because basically if a person performs the prayer before it's time, it's, it's not accepted. But what are the circumstances for that? Allah knows best. Allah may forgive, may forgive me. Any other question before we start with Brother Farooq? Narva, you showered me with questions yesterday and now you say no? You got all the answers. Come blank at the moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. Show it to Your questions, Brother. We. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. أوكي شيف جزاك الله خير for inviting me here today. I've got a few questions for you inshallah regarding different ideologies we might. Where are we picking the sound up from? Wait 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 from here. Let's dive in. No it's not. It's actually really good. Put it in the middle. Put it on your side here. Put your question. No no it doesn't go like that. Just put your question. Yeah. And then give me the mic. It's okay. Yeah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله إذا بيكنا على الرأي ده أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أوكي شيخ جزاك الله خير for inviting me here today الحمد لله I've got a few questions that we sometimes meet with whilst we're giving دعوة في سبيل الله one of the questions and it's it's a very important question which a lot of the new Muslims like myself and some people who have actually been in Islam all of their life they tend to not know the answer to this and that is where is Allah and why is it that some people say that Allah is not above the heavens and the earth can you elaborate on that Shia? Mm. Mm. I think you keep this with you now um, this is a common sickness unfortunately to say I mean secretly that even Christians and Jews didn't have problem with it. They believe that Allah is in the heaven. Christians. But we did not take it from them though. No. We took it from Allah. Allah the Almighty said, Which means in English, are you secured? You think you can be secured from Allah, the one who is in, he is in the height? As sama, it doesn't mean necessarily the sky in English. This is a misconception. To translate the word sama to sky, because sama, because the understanding of the sky is taken, borrowed from the meaning of highness, because as sama in, is in the heaven, in, in the height. That's why we say in Arabic, فَكُلُّ مَا عَلَى فَهُوَ سَمَا Everything that go, goes high, we call it سَمَا Everything goes high. So, 
When we say Allah is in is in as sama as He said, we mean by that that He is in the height. That means He is over the seven levels, seven skies. He is over them. Hey, why, why? He is over them. So remember what Allah said. Are you secure that the one in heaven may cause the earth to swallow you? Okay, then it will be shaking, or are you secured, secured that, that the one in heaven will be sending a wind that will be taking you? The one in heaven, the one in heaven. Can we say that Allah is warning us by, by Jibreel? No, can't be. Why? Going to the ayah number 68 of Surah Al-Isra, it will tell you. Because the same, the same uh, uh, statement is given in Surah Al-Isra. أَفَأَمِنْتُمْ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ بِكُمْ جَانِبَ الْبَرِّ أَوْ يُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَاصِبًا And the Damir, what is the Damir in English? The, uh, the, the subject renders to who? To Allah. So compare this one in Surah Tabarak to the one in Surah Al-Isra. Ayah number 68, you will find them both mutawafiq, huh? uh, that means they are connected, suitable, and they render their, they render to Allah the Almighty. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, well, the angels, يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِينَ They fear Allah who is over them. Some people say Allah's highness is related to the subject of His honor. He is high in honor can't be. Otherwise we'll be saying here that Allah is comparing himself to the angels, saying that he is higher in honor than the angels. Can't be. You know, there are people who try to manipulate and twist the meanings in order to become suitable to the cult he was born and he was programmed in believing. Okay? They don't take from the Quran just like the taking of one who is thirsty to take from the Qur'an. No, there is not thirsty. They are thirsty to, to bring some ayahs to fit their cult, the conception of their cult. Those are people who do that. They are cultists. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَمِنْتُ مَا فِي السَّمَاءِ يَخْسَفِكُمُ الْأَرْضِ And He said, الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ istawa. Allah went over His throne. Okay? Then we say, if Allah meant to say to us that He's over the throne, that means He's comparing His honor to the throne. Can, can you really, we know that Al-Arsh is a great creature. But he's not, he's, not, uh, uh, he's not a living creature. Arsh! I'll give you a small image between me and the chair. Okay? If I say to you that I'm over my chair, Will you for one second be thinking that I'm comparing my honor to the chair? No. Huh. Or I'm controlling the chair? Why? The chair went, tried to run away from me, so I captured the chair and I controlled it. Those people are bringing many naive answers in order to justify the evil and the, miscon the misconception and the falsehood they have. So we have Amit Mufi Sama, Ar Rahman Al Ashistawa. The Prophet said, Irhamu man fil ard. Be merciful to those on earth. Yarhamkum man fil sama. You'll be granted mercy by the one who's in heaven. Always we have love. And it's Sahih Muslim, narrated authentically. I don't need to say narrated authentically when I say narrated by Muslim. If you say, if I, if, if I say narrated by Abu Dawood, yes, I have to say authentic or not. May it may not be. But when I say narrated by Muslim, that means it's authentic. Narrated by Muslim that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, um, there's a man called Muawiyah al-Hakam al-Sulami, he slapped his concubine. And we know in Islam, the only expiation for that kind of sin is to free the one you slapped. That's the only expiation. 
So the Prophet uh, Muawiyah bin Hakam Sulami, he slapped his concubine. Then he regretted. Then he brought her to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, this is my concubine. I, I slapped her because I, she caused me losing one of the sheep. And I slapped her. Then the Prophet asked her, where is Allah? So the Prophet asked a question. Some people say, don't. This is a bad question to say, to, to ask where is Allah. You should not ask such question. Why? The Prophet asked it. If the Prophet asked it, why? What's the matter? What's wrong? Why, why shouldn't I ask? So the Prophet asked the concubine, where is Allah? She said, in the height. She, he said, who is me? She said, Anta Rasulullah. Then the Prophet said to her owner, free her. For she is a believer. She is a believer. Some people say, "What? Well, you know, concubine? Did he take your religion from a concubine, from a maid?" We say, "No. The point here is not what the concubine said, but the point is the approval of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not only the approval, but the shahada, the testimony that he gave that she is a believer. If." If those people were witness at that time, they would say, no, 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 she's not a believer, she's saying that Allah is in the height. No, 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 no. Is that enough? No, that's perfect, Sheikh. Jazakhir oh. um, Now, to go alongside with that, another uh, misconception that we often face when giving da'wah, especially amongst Muslims, yeah? mm -hmm. we, we approach other Muslims mm -hmm. uh, who you know, profess Islam, and sometimes they say that uh, I might be a kafir, or another Muslim might be a kafir, mm -hmm. because we... Uh, we, we say that Allah has certain attributes. We affirm what Allah says in the Quran. We say that Allah does indeed have a faith. Yeah? Uh, they say that th to do this is kufr and you become a non-Muslim. Yeah? And they also say, when we quote them some hadith, that Bukhari is not an authentic source of Islam. They attack Bukhari. Uh, they say it's not authentic? Yes. They say, oh, they, 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 they say that um, you can't take everything from, oh from yeah. Oil, yeah? Okay. Okay. So, uh, how do we go about uh, prove, uh, you know, proving Allah's attributes as they are, and what is the correct method to explain it to someone? And number two, uh, how do we deal with them when they attack our scholars, great scholars? Is this like, question or literature? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> shit. I just wanted Again, to clarify. Again, summarize it. Summarize it. Uh, so, First, uh, basic, basic question. If Sheikh. you believe that Allah has attributes, you yeah. get. Yeah, if you, how, do you, how do you explain to someone that Allah does have a faith? No, those who ask this question, I'm sure that they know, they believe that Allah has attributes. No. But they will be uh, making a contradiction. Some of the attributes may irritate their ears, mm -hmm. and some others they got used to. Mm -hmm. We have a rule in, in, in Islam. There's an ayah which is in itself ruling, qaida. <laughs> Which is لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ There is nothing that resembles Allah, there is nothing equal like Him. And He is the all-seeing or hearing. All-seeing or hearing. So, do they believe that Allah can hear? Yes, hmm? yeah, they do. As Allah said to Musa, Inna ma'akum mustami'un. We are with you hearing. He's talking about actual present timing of hearing. Inna ma'akum mustami'un. You know the meaning of mustami'un? We are hearing, and now we are hearing. So Allah hears. And why didn't you have any kind of irritation or disturbance? Why did it, it didn't disturb you believing that Allah is hearing, is seeing? Okay? So, whatever you criticize with us, you'll be criticized with what you believe in. Did you get it? Because yeah. Allah gave an important, perfect rule. There's nothing that resembles him, and he is a Samia, the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Mm -hmm. So some people may trick you and say, 
Well, didn't Allah say, Laysa kama fi shay? So you have to say to him, Please, can you complete the ayah? And when he completes the ayah, he knows that he's going to be in trouble. He fell in the decoy. Mm. You know the decoy? No. He'll fall in the decoy. Because Allah made it complete. So take the ayah all. We don't contradict any, any, uh, ourselves at all in the ayah. Because we maintain two perfect things, two important things. We do not make him similar to his creatures, but at the same time, we affirm what he affirmed to himself in terms of attributes. No. So, for example, why do I believe that Allah is in the heaven? Because he said that. It's not me who said it. I did not invent anything about Allah. It is Allah who described himself, and my task is to describe him with that he described himself. And that's what gives the person reassurance and peace in his heart that, alhamdulillah, he, because one of the most greatest sins in Islam is that you speak about Allah without knowledge. You never speak about Allah without knowledge. The, the second part though, Shaykh, in Bukhari it mentions a hadith saying... Yeah, Allah. but, but well, I want to show that this is uh, well clear to you. No. That, okay, if you don't want to believe in the attributes that you believe in, at least you must attribute Allah with something. Any attribute he believes in Allah, you'll catch him with it. Because you'll be conscious of himself. But we didn't. Right. The other question, is everything in Bukhari Sahih? Yeah. Number one, I heard some people saying that, why do you take Bukhari as a holy book? Mm. Wallahi, every single word of the hadith of Rasulullah in it is holy to us. Because Bukhari is not a book of uh, cook. It's not a book of history. It's a book of the words of Rasulullah sallallahu His words, his actions, his approvals. I'm not, if, if I take the book, I'm not taking Bukhari himself as a holy person. I'm taking the words of Rasulullah as a holy words for me. Just like the way I take the Quran as a holy book for me. The most important thing, that they are authentic. Now, if people say not every hadith in Bukhari is authentic, we'll say to them, this is not your business. I'm not harsh. Some people think that I'm harsh. Well, I'm not. Am I? No. Wait, <laughs> I'm asking you. Am I harsh? You see, see? I'll ask you the question again. Am I harsh? No. You see? Oh, I'm, I have to wait for your, for your answer. <laughs> Give me the answer. Am I harsh? No, she. I hope so. No. Okay. The case, when I say it's not your business, I'll let you understand what did I mean by that. If, for example, am I, are you a jewelist? Jewelry. Are you a jewelist? Gold, what do you call it? Goldman? A goldsmith. Huh? A goldsmith. Goldsmith. Are you goldsmith? You're not. Are you goldsmith? No. No, Okay. You may, uh, what if I come to you and say to you, you must verify to me this type of gold. Is it 18 carats? or 14 carats, or etc. Et Can you do that? No. What if you say to me, mm, they told you that it's 18? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, maybe it's nothing, take it. It's not your business. It's the business of who? The goldsmith. So, if we want to verify if this gold is true gold or not, gold-plated or not, where do we go? Right. Do we go to the uh, huh? Do, do, we, do we go to the baker? We don't go to the baker. We go to the people of that kind of profession. So, so if we want to verify about the authenticity of hadith, where do we go? To the people of hadith. Right. They are the one who can give their criticism about the hadith, whether it's authentic or not. Not you. That's that's number one. Number two. Okay. If we say to you that, oh, okay, not everything Sahih in, in Bukhari, it might be there are some hadith, etc., some controversial hadith. You know, I think Albani had two or three hadith. He said, Dara mm. he said, there are 70 weak hadith in Bukhari. Then Al Hafiz ibn Hajar, in his, he made a whole volume about that. It's called. Hidayatu Sari. 
Huh? This volume, he followed up all the 70 so-called weak, 70 so-called hadith, and he proved them authentic. And he refuted an Imam al-Darakuti. The Darakuti is a great muhaddith. But he thought that this is weak, and by evidence, and by detail, Imam Ibn Hajar, he refuted the so-called weakness of all of those hadith. Right? Okay. Number three. We say to them, all right, give me, if you criticize some of the hadith, either you say that all the Bukhari is, is da'if, or some. You can't say the whole ummah, as Ibn Hajar, and Ibn Salah, and Siyuti, and many other scholars, they said, this is what I meet Allah with at a day of judgment. That Bukhari and Muslim are the two authentic books that the whole Ummah is agreed upon. So if you have some, some criticism over some hadith, who are you? The, the last answer is this. Show us, if you criticize a particular hadith, particular, bring us this particular hadith and tell us that this is da'if so we can verify if it's yes, truly da'if or not. So I don't want him to play with this. You know what they're doing? They're dancing around the sand, the circle, and, uh, 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 around the point. Mm -hmm. By saying that not every hadith in Bukhari, Sahih, we say, all right, let's say, let's say for the sake of argument that you're, uh, you're right. Give us this hadith that you're criticizing, mm -hmm. particular one. By this, you will be ending it. Barakallahu feek, Sheikh. Next question. Um, there are so many different names people attribute to themselves. We have the Brilviet, we have this name, that name, and then we have a group called Salafis, etc. Who are the Salafis and what is the need to refer to yourself as one? Why would one call themselves a Salafi? You know, we're living in London here, right? No. <laughs> if, if it, suppose you, you're stubborn, you're still a Christian, and you ask me, what's, what's your religion? Would you imagine that I'll be coming and say to you, I am Salafi. My religion is Salafi. Will I be saying that to you? No. No. But sometimes we use it for a narrow reason. When we find people opposing the way of the Salaf, Salaf means the one who preceded you. And our Salaf in matters of religion are those who preceded us in faith. The Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha, I am the best Salaf for you, Ni'ma salaf wa ana laki. And that's narrated in Bukhari. That means I preceded you in faith. And when we, when we use the word I am Salafi, we use it to those who oppose the Salaf. Those who dance in the name of religion. Those who go left and right, which is different than what the Jews do. The Jews go forward, backward. Those people, they go rightward, leftward. It's only a difference of direction. <laughs> it's only a difference of direction, yeah. So, we say that to them to prove to them they are, that they are not following the Salaf. And when we say to those people that you are Salafis, that means we are given indica an, an indication saying to the people that we are following our Salaf in this, yeah. in this issue. But other than that, we don't use the word Salaf, you know. When there are no people oppose the way of the Salaf, we don't need to use the word Salaf anymore. We're Muslims. But when we found people opposing the way of the Salaf, then we, if they ask, if they ask, what is your way? We say, Book of Allah, the authentic Sunnah of Rasulullah, by the understanding and the practice of the Salaf of this Ummah. That's it. Sheikh. <laughs> Uh, the next question, to what extent can we use uh, da'if hadith, weak hadith, and is every weak hadith rejected? Let's deal with the last part of the question, of the, question, the, the last yeah, question, mm -hmm. which, which, which is what? The, is the last part of that question yeah, is... Is every da'if rejected? Yes. Basically, yes. yes. In general, yes. We don't need it. Because when Allah completed his deen, did Allah leave any gap that the, the weak hadith will, will, will cover it? Huh? Tell me. <laughs> if, the, 
if the deen of Allah needed a weak hadith, that would be opposing what Allah said, Ayat of Salaam, Al Yawma Akmal Tulakum Deenakum Wa Atmam Tu Alaykum Ni'mati Wa Radhi Tulakum Al Islam Adina. This day I have perfected your religion, completed huh, your faith, and I am pleased with selecting Islam as your deen. Is, that means at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the deen was perfect. Okay? So if there is a hadith ta'if, we don't need it basically. We don't need it. But the, the, the weak hadith varies. There are two types of weak hadith. One is slightly weak, and the other one is huh? very weak. Very weak. If it's very weak, we say bye, not goodbye. Not good. Bye. Not goodbye. But if it's slightly weak, we say wait. Does it have any kind of support by other slightly weak hadith? Which means to say, two slight hadith, when they gather and they have the same meaning, that is a sign that, yes, it can be elevated to be Hassan. So there, are, there might be some hadith, two, three, four hadith, and they have the same subject, and they are slightly weak, each one will be giving support to the other. <coughs> this will be, by the combination of those weak hadith, we call them, we give them one mean, uh, uh, classification that they are Hassan li ghayrihi. Hassan means, the, Hassan is uh, the last levels of authentic hadith. Because we have mutawatir. Mutawatir is the highest. We have ahad. Ahad itself varies. There is authentic ahad. Okay? And that, uh, uh, and that ahad, uh, we have a sahih. And this sahih varies. It has two categories. Al sahih li dhatihi, al hasan li dhatihi, wa al hasan li ghayrihi. Okay? Al hasan is the lowest level of al sahih. Yet, it is consisted of the authentic hadith. The, the various slightly weak hadith, when they combine under one subject, they can form in their combination as one Hassan Sahih. Clear? Yes. Uh, get back to the question. Okay, so uh, the first part of that question, mm. uh, to what extent can we use weak oh, hadith? That's why I was yeah. thinking about that. Yeah. If the hadith is weak, but slightly weak, there are conditions if we want to use, to use it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the, prospect, the perspective of Bukhari and Muslim and Imam Mundari and many other scholars, okay, that the hadith da'if should not be used at all based on what I mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. Now, when can we use the weak hadith in conditions? Number one, it should not be deeply weak. It should be slightly weak. Second, we do not say qala rasulullah. We, we may use some terms that indicate its weakness. By, for example, yurwa, ruwiya, ruwiya an rasulullah. And scholars know that. That when you hear that term from a scholar who knows, who knows about hadith, he says, Yurwa an Rasulullah, he's giving you an, an indication that this hadith consists, contains some slight weakness in it. Yurwa, Ruwiya. So, first, you should not say, Qala Rasulullah. Second, it should not be we, uh, deeply weak. Third, you should use some terms like ruwiya. Fourth, should not oppose. 
It should, yeah, but, but this, this may, they may say to you, it may, it may not oppose, it may oppose to you, but it may not oppose to me. No. They may argue with it. No. Yeah. Number four, it should be consistent in its usage. To al-fadail, just like our brother Pakistani brothers, they say fazail. Uh, the word fazail is not Arabic, by the way. It's al-fadail, fadail al-amal. What's in Fadal Ahmad? Um, some narrations they may contain with it in self, within itself, encouragement. Give you a push encourage, to encourage you. But it should be used for the encouragement of the Fadail Ahmad. But it should not be issuing, legislating. Some a'mal that we consider to be fada'il by we hadith. No! Did you understand that or it was complicated? I'll repeat it. I'll repeat it to you. You know, whatever Islam issues to you, for example, Salat al duha Salat al taraweeh Salat al witr Okay? It should not be affirmed by a weak hadith. It should be founded by authentic hadith. Okay? But if there is some hadith that encourage you to perform Salat al Duha, Salat al Witr, then we may use it. It's only for the encouragement of what had been what been what had been proven to us authentically. Is that clear? No. Is that clear to you? Can I ask a question? Yes. Can you tell us about the Mukhayyar and Musayyar? But in a simple way, so we can understand, are we... Because Allah knows everything, yeah? So does that mean Allah knows what I'm doing? And if He knows that I'm doing, why is He punished me for it? This is a lot of people knowing who get this that, question. Knowing that we're going to do is not dictating. Yes. Knowing what we're going to do is not dictating. But this is something... Uh, uh, something great with Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what, we be, what would be the end of you how will you be behaving okay what's going to happen with you he knows it and he let your end be going simultaneously yes. you know it took me some days to be able to pronounce this word simultaneously but you're, you're Scottish, that's why you say Simo. Yeah, that's <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, it goes, subhanAllah, it coincides. Allah's Qadr coincides with your actions. He knows where, where will your end be. How your end will be fitting your... Allah will give you an average. You know the average? Of all average breathing of all your actions and he will let your end go simultaneously with this this is how Allah, how great is Allah but everything that Allah gave you a will to deal with it you're responsible for everything that you have no will to stop it or to run it this over your control you'll not be blamed if you have flu, okay, Allah will not be blaming you. Why did you have flu? Why? Because you are Musayyar in this. You're not Mukhayyar. Okay? Having a big nose, you are Musayyar. You're not be blamed. Why? Okay? Is that clear? Yeah, there are people in terms of guidance. They, they consider them, they are jabri. They think that they are, they are controlled. If you say to them, why don't you pray? They will say to you, Allah did not guide me yet. Who told you you are katha? You liar. Who told you he didn't want to? He, did you know that he, you wanted to be guided, but he didn't want to guide you? You're lying. You, you have two big sins, and I, I'm, I'm afraid that the second sin would be equal, if, if not greater. Because to, to claim something about Allah is horrible. 
قل إنما حرم ربي الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن Abominations are haram to Allah, with Allah. Wal-ithm, sin. Wal-baghi, transgression. Bighayri al-haq, without truth. Wa-an tushriku billahi ma lam yunazzil bihi sultana. And you set up partners with Allah, in which Allah did not give you any authority with. Wa-an taqulu ala Allahi ma la ta'lamun. And that you speak about Allah what you know not. So which which is the highest one among the four? The last one that you say about Allah without knowledge. Okay. Super. Next question, Chief. That's why, if someone, if if some, I mean, no one will be ever saying, "I'll stay in my house, and may Allah guide us, provide us." Yeah, go ahead and do it. Wish you good luck. Next day I'm going to pray funeral on you. You're not, they're not going to do that. No, we'll strive. We'll try our best. But in terms of matters with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no. They say, we, Allah did not guide us yet. Allah did not guide us yet. That covers the question. Bismillah. Um, now, what manner should we treat the Ahmad Bidah? And uh, can we pray behind them? So, should we give salam to them? Should we be kind to them? Or should we be harsh with them and take the mickey out of them? And can we pray behind them or go into their masajid and pray behind uh, the Imam? Can we deal with them? It depends. That is if we've clarified they are Ahmad Bidah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, we know for sure this person is uh, Ahmad Bidah. For example, initially, at the beginning time, you should approach them with the best way. Okay? If they refused and they persisted on their bid'ah, despite you showed them all evidences, everything, okay? Then they deserve to be dealt with in another way. And that depends. You may be, for example, living with people in a non Muslim environment. So you can be harsh and blunt. It will be more difficult. It's not haram though, no. But it's not better. If, you, if you're talking about being wise, it's not better. Uh, therefore, uh, we shouldn't uh, be harsh. Though. Unless the environment in itself is an environment of sunnah. And this person suddenly he emerged with his bid'ah. Then you are allowed to deal with him bluntly and according to what the atmosphere okay obliges yes what about him i'll just give you an but example praying behind him it varies number one sorry if i interrupted you sorry okay if he is a da'ya for his innovation a leader an opponent okay accusing ahl sunnah that they are ahl bid'ah Accusing Ahl Tawheed that they are people of shirk, following his desire, aggressive, <coughs> offensive. I think once, man. Okay? Then this person we don't pray behind. Especially if we know that he doesn't have only innovation, he has many other things. We always find them together. That he's saying, for example, what's wrong with saying, Oh Prophet, help me after his death? Nothing wrong with that. Is that specific to the individual or could it be because we've seen it once in a masjid, somebody said it, and we can't now go and pray behind anybody in that house? Or do we have to have evidence against that single That's person? what I'm saying. If a person is layman, mm -hmm. if a person is layman. What if we're the layman and we don't know about them? Oh, I forgot to say mm -hmm. something from the beginning. If Always if we have the alternative, mm -hmm. why don't you go to the alternative? Right? But now make you, you question may be related to those who do not have an alternative. Yeah. And we say to them, if this man is layman person, and he's not aggressive or showing challenging, challenging to prove that, yes, you can ask the dead people, then this person you don't pray behind. So is that just the person or is that the, the actual question? Yes, because we have to differentiate between a person who is involved in bid'ah 
compared to the one who is a leader of bid'ah. Okay, for example, there's a, a Madani mosque outside my house. And uh, am I allowed to go into that masjid and pray? That's why I said to you. Is it known with uh, aspects of shirk? Have you got proof that they're upon shirk? <laughs> it's the ones with the green turbans. <laughs> mm. yeah. Is the green turban an uh, element of shirk? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's the group, it's isn't it? The Madani group. Like if it's chroma key, green one, <laughs> it's not. It if it's blue, <laughs> no offense. It's okay. no. Jeff, can I ask you a question? Please do. Because uh, someone has been asking me this question all week, and I said when I get to uh, ask the Sheikh, I'll, I'll get the answer for you. It's uh, Surah Nisa, uh, verse 137, interpretation of the meaning. Lo, those who believe, then disbelieve and then again believe and then disbelieve and then increase in disbelief Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never pardon them nor will uh, he guide them unto a way so was a uh, maybe tafsir of this you know understanding of this and someone asked me this question so. yes yeah, very obvious very clear <coughs> He's talking about those who, whose end, whose the end with them ended like that, in disbelief. Allah will not guide them, and Allah will not forgive them. And uh, in another ayah, in the kafar wa ma as for those who disbelieve and they died as uh, as disbelievers. So this is what. Yani Allah is talking about an end of the person. This was that showed the end of a person. He believed, then disbelieved, then believed, then disbelieved, okay. then he increased in disbelief. So, when you say disbelief, is it like pure kufr? Yani is it kufr and I'ma? I was on the ground. No, no, no. This is kufr. Uh, kufr, kufr. Kufr. Except Allah is not me. here. Yes. That's it. Many things. Those people, you don't find them only denying that Allah is not over the heaven. And by the way, those people who deny that Allah, they say Allah is not in the heaven, they will say to them also, for sure, you don't believe that He is in the, in the world as well. Yes, they say yes. So He's not in the world, inside the world. No. Okay, He's outside of the world. No, He's not. So if He is not in and not out, then you should be asking, where is He? They lost their God. Those are the people who lost their God. It's true. Because the mind would never solve the, such problem. When you say that Allah is neither nor, neither outside the world nor inside the world. So the mind would be asking questions. You must, as if it's saying to the body, you must find me a solution for that. You've got to find a solution. Where's the solution? He's neither nor. The communist will interfere here and will say to him, See, we told you, there's no God anywhere, neither in nor out. Now you're with us. Thank you. You're supporting us. I've got a question. Um, the mosque right next to my house. Uh, Raise your voice, bro. Huh? Raise your voice. Oh. Raise your <laughs> voice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the mosque right next to my house, yeah? Yes. They got problems. They don't touch. They don't like touching each other. Touching each other? No, not. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they allergic? When they line up, Close when they line up for the prayer, uh. like literally, they stay away from each other. Touching feet. Yeah. yeah. No, Basically, so you try the touching their feet, you're doing a split. Yeah. <laughs> and every time you try and grab them, pull them together, it's like, yeah. Yeah. they just yeah, stay away. It's, I'm not forbidden to go there, sort of thing. Like I, I don't know. It's, I've seen it. it. It is disturbing, and some of the people literally, when, when they go on the ruku, they take a step forward. Mm. It, these are things like they, they, they bother you when you when you're praying. Like. Yeah. The Prophet ﷺ was fixing the lines between the companions extremely. 
today we have a glimpse of understanding about the seriousness of this matter. If you see the Chinese or Korean army, when they, when they take a march, a walking, they're all be making the same action exactly, accurately, huh? mm -hmm. as one person. Synchronized. Synchronized. As one person, all of them. And you'll be, you know, you'll be amazed. Wow, look at that. There is no one second difference in action between the first one and the second one. So you like it when you see it. And Allah likes that our line will be like this. Disciplined. Yes. So leaving the gap, it's one of the one of the tragic uh, problems of the Muslims nowadays because they say that there is no need for the gap. They say there's no need for, uh, sorry, uh, closing or uh, covering the gap, which is extremely mistake. Related by Anas, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ibad Allah, la tusawwunna sufufakum Either you fix your lines and you fill the gaps, or Allah will be altering your hearts to turn it against one another among you. So there's relevance between performing the prayer and between being supportive. And being sorry, sorry, if, if, if you don't fix the lines, then that has something to do with the huh? hatred between the Muslims. And you may ask, is that right? Is that possible? Yes. One of the one of the steps of unity is to unite yourselves in your prayer. Once you do that, Allah will be granting you the unity between yourselves. Look, this is this is an evidence about what, what the Prophet said. He said, either you fix your lines or Allah will be making your hearts against one another. Clear, mm -hmm. So when the Prophet said, uh, you should be fixing your lines or Allah will be uh, setting your hearts against one another, and I said, after this hadith, we used to be sticking strongly my foot to the foot of the one next to me. To me in the prayer. And shoulder to shoulder, Sheikh, as well. Yes. Well, s some people they'll say, oh, come on. If, if you stick your foot to my foot, that means you'll be leaving a gap in the shoulder. Isn't this what they say? Hmm. So, what is the answer to that? Your shoulder starts. What about Amin or not? Amin. What about Amin? Where? When you will say it. The Prophet said, then if the Imam said Amin, then all of you should be saying Amin behind him. No, he doesn't say that. What? The one next to my he doesn't say, none of them guys say it. Oh, you they don't, they don't, the they don't they phrase their voice with it. Yeah. You don't hear it, basically, it's silent. It's really silent, there would be two no, people, like you've got 50 people in the room. There is no time between two people probably uh, Fatiha and the beginning of the Surah. No, there's not really the Surah. When he's talking to the uh, Valdin, he answered directly, there is no time, it, it, it means he doesn't say Amin in there. Mm. Mm. After the Fatiha. I'm, I'm afraid this is not what he mentioned. I'll tell you why. Just a second. Okay. Yeah. He's talking about, especially among the Ahnaf, they don't allow anyone to raise his voice with Amin. Okay? Do we have any Afghani brothers here? You? In your, ha in, in your home uh, in Afghanistan, do the people say Amin? They raise their voice with it? No. Very quiet. Let's see here. 
narrated by Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said إذا أمن الإمام فأمنه فإنه من وافق تأمينه تأمين الملائكة غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه He said, the Prophet said, and this is authentic hadith If the Imam said Ameen, then you should say Ameen Okay, you may say, but the hadith doesn't say publicly Wait, what? Sorry? No! No! Not only after saying what Ah, it's good you ask this question. Mm. But after he says Amin. And today, today people say to me, Sheikh, we don't hear your Amin because you want to make our Amin after your Amin. So I said, my people don't give me any. Any time, the moment I did not finish Dalin, you, you hear them saying all oh, I mean before me, before me they say I mean. What you should be doing is to say I mean after my I mean, not after Dalin. Because the Prophet said, if he said I mean, then you say I mean. You know what I mean? Of then, إذا قال الإمام آمين فأمنوا. We will give him a course. <laughs> we will give him a course. <laughs> to let him be, to let him be a, a knowledgeable imam. That's what If I say Amin, and don't he did it. it, is that okay? If what? Say if he didn't say it, when he says Dali. Yes, it won't harm say, you. It will not harm you because the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Yusalluna lakum." They pray for you. فَإِنْ أَصَابُوا فَلَكُمْ وَلَهُمْ وَإِنْ أَخْطَأُوا فَلَكُمْ وَعَلَيْهِمْ They lead the prayer for you. So if they made it uh, right, then it will be for your favor and their favor. But if they made it wrong, then it's, it will be for favor, but it will be against them. What? Okay. Now, let's, let's go... Uh, so the hadith here is saying, which is authentic, if the Imam said Amin, then you say Amin. Why it is important? You have to make this uh, dating, exact dating of saying Amin. You know why? The Prophet said, whoever his Amin will go, will coincide the, the saying of the angels Amin, he will be forgiven. Hmm? So that's why it's important to know the exact saying of Amin. Tayyib. Uh, here in, uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Al-Bukhari narrates that Ata said Amin in the prayer. Sorry, sorry, not Ata. Ata said that Ibn Zubair, yani Abdullah bin Zubair. Who's Abdullah bin Zubair? He is the nephew of Aisha radiallahu anha. He said, uh, Ibn Zubair said, Ameen. And all the people behind him, they said, Ameen. And there was Lajja in the mosque. Lajja in a big crowd. Waves of voices. Waves of voices. Now, in some mosques, if you say Amin, they're about to mm, give you a slap on the mouth. Shut up. <laughs> Don't say it publicly. Or if you raise your finger, give me your finger. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they may even break it. <laughs> say this is bizarre. It's based on ignorance. May Allah forgive them. <clears throat> That's why knowing the Sunnah is very important. It's very important. How many, how many Ameen of the angels we missed to let it go with it coinciding? Which will cause forgiveness? That's, that's what the Prophet said. Whoever's Ameen coincided the Ameen of the Malaika, he'll be forgiven. That's a fadail, isn't it? It's a hadith, it's authentic hadith. Yeah, but it's, it's encouraging you to do it as well. Yes, well, it's, well, it's authentic.
while it's affecting the church. Yes, yeah. Allah Alam, I've heard it that uh, Yahud, they envy us for that. Yeah. The Amin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. But, but uh, there's no argument about Amin, but we're talking about no. the exact timing of saying it. Yeah. Yeah. We still have. Yeah. Yeah. Should we warn before Salat people say, don't say Amin till we have enough? Should talk. So the, the Imam will say it. No. I, I don't like to speak to speak it just like that, yani, but no, one of us uh, in the light. Anyway, inshallah, we may do it once. No, no problem. Inshallah, inshallah. Why not? Why not? I'd like to have you finish clarifying about the the feet and the the, the shoulders. You yes, it's very good. Yes, it's, it's good. You reminded me. Because some people will say, if you want to stick your foot to my foot, then how can you stick your shoulder to my shoulder? And especially when you Salafis, you make your feet, feet, foot, your feet like that. Let me say it, right? So we say to them, I have to follow the one who is, on, who is next or closer to the, to, to the side of the Imam. Can, can three persons stop and we make, it, we make a, an example for that, please? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. See? Now, let's suppose that the, the brother Jawad, there's someone on his right or left now? Right. right. Yeah. Okay? He should not go to him. If he can, we say, number one, we say, covering two, uh, covering one thing is better than cover nothing. Okay, so if you want me to bargain, okay, I'm gonna bargain on the foot because I cannot bargain on the shoulders because of you, not me. That's why I'm doing this. At least I'm covering something. It's better than covering nothing. Did you get the point, brothers? But why I cannot, why I cannot stick my shoulders? I'm not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 stand up. I need you. Okay, Shay? Now, Let's suppose that that, that, he, that the, the man on your right on your side right side he went far and he refused to allow you to stick your foot to his foot. Then you come to the to the direction closer to the Imam and you don't care about him. That's his sin. But if you can even though stick your foot, if he said to you why you're doing this, tell him he did not allow me to, to take my shoulder with you. At least I'm I'm sticking my, my foot to you. Do you know that? Jazakallah khair. Sheikh, I was just going to say, uh, yeah. there's been moments where that's happened, yeah. where they've distanced themselves, and I've always tried to make at least one part of my body touch them, whether it's the shoulder or the elbow or, or, the, or the foot. If you can stick everything, that would be the sunnah. The shoulder and the foot and even maybe the leg. But people wouldn't be... But also we should be blaming some some of our bodyguards people. They have <laughs> bodybuilders. <laughs> because when when he put his foot, especially if he speaks Algerian, he will stick it and harm people with it. Please be smooth. The Prophet ﷺ said the best among you in the prayer are those who are best in soft shoulders. Your shoulder should be, I know that you, mashallah, if you, if you extend or push your muscle, it's going to be inflated. <laughs> but show softness as much as you can. And also when you stick your leg to, you should understand that people don't, they, they, they're not happy with sticking too much. At least give it a little sticking. Is be smooth. It, is it, is it, um, so they will not be hating the sunnah. No. Sheikh, is it, is it, because, uh, this is fitner as well. Is it uh, where the toes are, we touch, or is it the ankles? Uh, some, some people, they do that. <laughs> well, they so so the toes. And, and they hit you with that. They will yeah. harm you. Yeah. yeah. So it should be like that. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And to make it straight, is it straight by the ankle or the toes? It may, it may go like this a little bit. I mean, uh, say for example, uh, this guy, he's got size tens. And this mate boy is a size oh, six. The, the, the back. It's the ankle, isn't it? The heel. Yes. The heel, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, chef, I wanted to ask about travel price. Travel price. Which is the best way, and what would you consider in the distance for traveling? Um, if you, if we were to measure, to make a measurement for the prayer, for the mm -hmm. traveling prayer, yeah. it would be easier for you to complete your prayer. Mm -hmm. Did you get my point? Yeah. Because it will be more hassle now to take your measurement, okay, and to yeah. see how, did it, did it exceed, did it reach to 10 kilometers or not yet, or... But it's, it's been left to what is considered to be a matter of travel already. So if I say, for example, are you, are you passing by Birmingham or we say you're traveling to Birmingham? So now we know that this is travel. Okay? Conventionally known. Is that right? Customary. Customary. Yeah. Known oh, that the custom of travel. Yeah. So what, what, do you, what do you think that this is a travel? Mm -hmm. And, this is a mistake that many people do, S some of the scholars, they do it and they allow it, but personally, I don't feel good with it. And that is combining and shortening in your travel while you're not in the mode of travel, but you're traveling. Did you understand it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're traveling, okay. Well, for example, you can stay one day in Bangkok. In a hotel, for example. Next day you're traveling, you're going back. So they go to the hotel, for example, and they perform Dhuhr and Asr in the hotel, and then Maghrib and Isha in the hotel, and they have nothing to do in the They're not uh, suffering in the hotel, they're taking snacks. So, in this case, we say to them, if you are in the process of traveling, yes, you can combine and shorten. But if you're not in the process of traveling, you're, you're not taking the travel, <coughs> okay? You don't, you, you shorten, but you don't combine. You shorten, unless if you're taking the travel. Because all the hadith detected by Rasulullah, إِذَا جَدَّ بِهِ السَّيْرِ إِذَا كَانَ عَلَى ظَهْرِ سَيْرِ All of those, narrations were describing the case of the Prophet that he was taking the initiative of the, of the travel, he was traveling. But there are people who are sitting while they are traveling. I'm not talking about airplane, no, no, no. He can combine in the airplane. I'm talking about people who sat down for two days, for example, in a city. Okay? They, are tra they have the case of the travel. They can combine. They can, sorry, sorry, sorry. They can shorten, but they don't combine because combining was only was only in the matter of taking the travel. So there's a difference between a traveler and traveling. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. No problem. That's a good English accent, uh, so, explanation. <laughs> the shortening is to... The, the brother is really, our Muazzin is really concerned that we did not give the Adhan yet. Is that right? Are you going to give Adhan or? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, uh, yeah, is that, um, so when you say shorten, like two rakats for Dhuhr, is that, is that what you mean by shorten? Yes. And to yeah. separate them as usual? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. If you want to combine, you mean, or shorten? Shorten. shorten. Yeah. Combining, for example, if you want to take a travel, mm. the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> he used to be, if, if he wants to take a travel, he used to be waiting sometimes, waiting, if he wants to take the travel, before Dhuhr, he delay Dhuhr to the time of Asr in his travel. But if he goes right after Dhuhr, takes his travel, then he advance Dhuhr to the time of uh, Asr. Ad advance Asr to the time of Dhuhr, combining the two prayers, then he takes his way. So you can do that when you're at home. Your intention is to travel. You can do that, yes. And then you're at home, so yes. you wait for Dhuhr to come in. Yes, but there, but there is one condition in that. That you do it, if, if you are traveling, traveling by airplane today, we don't do it in the house based on the fact that sometimes your flight may be canceled for a reason or another. So do it in, in the airport. Okay.
Mm. Um, <coughs> this, is, this is on the travel prayer thing still, yeah? So, for example, if I do my suffer, yeah, and I manage to come back home, yeah, but on my suffer, I've actually prayed Dhuhr and Asr. Ah, pray before you arrive home. And then I've come back yeah, home combined. and Asr time has come in. Okay. No, so, but, but you said, when did you start your travel? I started my travel in the morning. Yeah, in the so morning? For, yeah, for, then you should delay Dhuhr to the time of Asr. Uh, yeah, hmm? yeah, yeah. But if your travel begins yeah. after Dhuhr, then pray Dhuhr and Asr even at the beginning, beginning time of Dhuhr. And take your travel. Yeah. And wish you good luck. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. I heard one brother telling me, he goes, um, basically, you can combine your prayers. Yeah, when you're on your suffer, but when you actually get back home, you can't shorten them. You can still combine them, but you have How to. How can you combine without shortening? <coughs> I was thinking the same thing. Okay, so okay go ahead, <coughs> Okay, um, the next question, Sheikh. Uh, some people say that uh, the Shahada is enough to save one from Jahannam alone, and uh, when you try to encourage them to do ibadat, uh, they'll use that as an excuse. And they'll say, Allah knows uh, that I'm, it was in my heart, etc. Uh, how do we deal with those people? What is the ruling uh, on saying something what, like that? When you tell them what? Sorry? When you tell uh, them uh, what? Some people, you, you try to encourage them to, to perform salah. You'll say, come with me to the mosque. Or you're giving them da'wah, mm -hmm. trying to make them come back to Allah. And they'll say, look, you know, the shahada. Or, they'll, or someone might pipe up amongst the gathering and say, look, he's, he is a Muslim. He has took shahada. Uh, that's enough to save him from Jahannam and it's his life yeah. and Allah knows what's in his heart etc these type of things what is the the, is the correct opinion of how we deal with those people and uh, what evidence that are there we can say to them that look you know you have to do more than just say a few words we, we should know that La ilaha illallah contains conditions that have to be applied okay Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was fighting people who used to say la ilaha illallah and he said to Umar wallahi if they did not give me even a pot that they used to be given to the Prophet sallallahu I will be fighting them for not giving it because he said zakah is one of the conditions one of the rights of la ilaha illallah فَإِنَّ الزَّكَاةَ تَحَقُّ الْمَالِ That's what the Prophet ﷺ, uh, Abu Bakr said. So saying La ilaha illallah, inshallah it may, it may benefit, but it may benefit at the end though. It doesn't give you a guarantee that you may, there might be some VIA before entering Jannah. So it has a guarantee at the end, but it has no, no guarantee for the beginning. Will you be entering Jannah without passing by? No guarantee. Yeah. Because there are do's and don'ts that you have to observe and to follow. You can't say, I say la ilaha illallah and that's it. No. That's why people of Quraysh were fighting the Prophet. Because they know that there are conditions, there are conditions that must be implemented when they give the testimony. If they knew that it's only a word, then why do they have to fight and give that sacrifice? They could have, they could have said it, La ilaha illallah, and that's all finished. But they know that behind La ilaha illallah, there are conditions that must be implemented. Otherwise, no, it's rejected. Uh, you still have time? Yes, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yalla bismillah. Do you want to make a that now? Close the program, inshallah. Okay, should we close the program? Uh, I don't understand. Is the adhan 7.45? Eight now, sir. Ah, so we exceeded even the adhan. Yeah. Uh, we, we, then we close the Jazakallah khair for uh, your time, Sheikh, and everyone who contributed. May Allah uh, benefit us with this knowledge, Amen. and may Allah forgive us as if this was a gathering which uh, Allah's forgiveness is in. Amen. Amen. Yes.